Okay, so for those of you that have read Attached, this is a question that pertains to the book Attached and also what came up in terms of the research on attachment theory. And it's actually something that I absolutely agree with. And it's a criticism I have of this book and of the field and is something I'm gonna be addressing in the book I'm writing now on attachment. Um, but, okay, so this person raises the, the question, I've been reading and researching on attachment for a year and I think that I'm confused. The theory says that 50 to 60% of people are securely attached and the others are insecurely attached. Well, that same theory tells us that some ways to be more securely attached is to find a secure partner. And at the same time, it says that when you start to be more secure, you won't feel attracted by insecure partners anymore. But isn't there a contradiction in this? I don't really think, well, first of all, I don't think that 50 to 60% of people are secure. I think it's more like 30 to 35 and being secure from your upbringing is a privilege. Um, this way you can fix things by being secure and to be secure, you need to be with secure people who aren't going to be attracted to you because you aren't secure. It's kind of a chicken or the egg contradiction. I agree. So I would like to learn how to be secure even if my partner is or isn't, if I have a partner, or if I don't, um, if I'm dwelling or if I'm in a breakup, um, I don't want to depend on someone else's attachment style to make me feel secure. Bravo, bravo, bravo. That's, a, that's like, like my mission statement in so many words. So I agree. The other, the, the other piece of this that I think I want to interject is that these are not static states of being right i kind of always come back to that but it's true they're not static states of being so and within secure people there will be a measure of anxiety and avoidance but when we talk about it as leading into something as qualified as insecure attachment is when the anxiety or the avoidance that you feel has become so intense or so prevalent in the way that you operate on a day-to-day -day basis and in your relationships that it has become that has got to the point where it's impacting your quality of life. It is leading to um, lower feelings of self-esteem. It is disrupting the way that you are feeling about yourself, right? Ultimately, your quality of life is being impacted to the point where you feel it, you know it, and there's having real consequences in your day-to-day -day living, right? So, that is when we start to look at, okay, well, which end of the stick is becoming exaggerated here, right? Now, all of these dimensions exist within all of us, anxiety or avoidance. It all exists within all of us in the same way that if you were ever to read like the diagnostic manual, statistical manual for mental health disorders, DSM, all of us carry the traits of every mental disorder out there. It's just, it's like, it's, it, don't think of it as like a radio dial. It's more of like an equalizer and you've got all these different buttons that you can move up and down and all of that. So these dimensions of experience, we all have them. Each one of us within us has the capacity for psychoticism. When you daydream, that is on a dimension of psychoticism. Each of us has the capacity, we all talk to ourselves, right? But we haven't, you know, that there's, we all collectively as a society decide that there's some line that we call normality, right? And, if, and, and so this notion of, you know, schizophrenia and psychoticism versus some indigenous cultures where that's, not, they don't deem that as mental illness. That's, they're just in touch with the spirit world, right? They're living in a different mental and emotional and psychic space. Doesn't mean that they're not, that they're ill, right? So you have to think, we have to like, go deeper into thinking about the ways these things are defined, okay? But, so when we think about attachment, and I am kind of a law of attraction person, I do think that the people we attract into our sphere will mirror something back to us. So if you are moving more towards a secure attachment, and maybe you encounter someone that you deem as more secure than you, you are still mirroring something back to them. So it may be that this more secure aspect of you that is blossoming is calling in someone that is more secure in those areas. But maybe that person, maybe that person is struggling with some areas that, that you bring something to. I think the other thing that bugs me about some of these books is that it talks about insecure attachment as somehow being less than secure attachment, right? Which is a bunch of malarkey because 
there are so many positive strengths and attributes that both that 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 insecure people bring to our experience of contrast in the world, right? So, I mean, insecure people, I think, could be wildly attractive to a secure person for a lot of reasons because uh, you know there's a lot of of creativity and of curiosity and of sometimes disinhibition or dis yeah disinhibition that um, individuals with insecure attachment styles may have, and so someone who has a more secure attachment style may be enlivened by that. They may be, they themselves, in a place where they're questioning their sense of meaning and purpose in the world. And when they meet someone who so has such conviction in the way that like an open heart might have, for example, they can be swept up in that. So, so we're, and we're always changing. You know, this goes back to like personality development and, and life stages and that I do think also just by virtue of our developmental process, we may feel more secure or insecure in a particular phase of life, right? This is why in my course on healing attachment wounds, I have people create a timeline and I have them first identify the major relationships they've had or, or the people they've had strong feelings for whether or not they were in a relationship. And then I have them circle the ones that felt the most intense. And then I have them plug in in between them what was going on in their life. Because sometimes we all, I teach personality development and uh, the lifespan, which is partly why this is on my mind, but that sometimes there are really actual things in life that we are going through that can make us more or less secure. And it doesn't have anything to do with the attachment style of our partner. Right. So I guess I wanted to just mention that I, I agree with the, the observation of the contradiction being made here. And I 1000% agree that, um, that it's with, it's a fabulous book, really good book. Recommend everyone we read Attached. Very nice way of clarifying things and laying them out. But I do feel like one of the criticisms I have of that book is that the solution just seems to be, hey, find a secure person. But that goes back to the original issue, which is that you are looking at someone or something outside of yourself to source your sense of security from. In addition, it's also telling individuals with insecure attachment that they're kind of fucked <laughs> unless you, exactly, unless you're lucky enough or privileged enough to find someone secure, right? So, yeah, I, I absolutely agree with that with that observation.